I guess you are wondering which 35mm to get, Sigma 35 1.4 or Canon 35 RF 1.8. <laughs> Let's get to the first one. I want to start with two major differences. First one is the Canon lens has macro capabilities, so it's very useful for weddings, to shoot rings. Um, you don't have to take dedicated macro lens with you and you get beautiful portrait shoots as well as macro shots. The Canon lens can focus twice as close as this one, up to 17 centimeters, and sometimes it's very useful. Of course, this is uh, quite a modern lens too, so you can get very close as well. So, second major difference is this little guy has image stabilizer, as uh, this doesn't have. Well, as much as this is a difference, but it doesn't really affect photography, it's more made for videographers. When you are shooting with this handheld, it helps a lot to get those smooth shots, but in photography, usually 1.8 aperture is enough for everything. That being said, I was using my Sigma a lot for photography and never had a problem without image stabilizer. This can be paired with Canon EOS R's electronic stabilizer, not the in-body stabilizer, because it doesn't have one but artificial stabilizer. Another interesting difference that actually doesn't affect photography is this lens goes with this lens hood, which is actually really useful not only for blocking sun, but for protecting it from dropping. For example, I had an accident with my 16-35 that I am filming on right now. I was wearing it mounted on my camera on my belt without lens hood, and then it accidentally fell down on the floor and it went like this. Boom! And I had a huge dent here, preventing it from screwing on filters. If I were using lens hood at the time, that would have never happened. This guy doesn't come with lens hood, but what I ended up using is step-up rings similar to this. You just mount them on your lens, and actually they act like a lens hood, preventing it from damage, from sun, and also you can mount a larger size filter on it. That is actually another great tip, to buy only one size of filters. For me the best size is 82mm, then you just mount step-up adapters and put the filter here, and you have only one filter for every lens. And while these adapters are cool, I want to buy the direct adapter that goes from this size to 82. They look something like this, and I will link them down below. And as for filters, I really enjoyed using variable ND filter from Freewell. They are mostly useful for filmmaking, not photography, but I find them very versatile to use in photography too. And the other difference in packaging is that Sigma goes with the back, it's like a lens pouch. I don't have it with me, but here it is. And for this Sigma, there is another nice alternative for ND filters. If you're mounting it to EOS R, you're using EF to RF adapter, and you can buy one with ND filters installed. Actually, it's a very cool thing to have. Yes, of course the price. This one is number 4 for me, but maybe for someone of you it will be the main thing to look at. This one is cheaper, this one is more expensive. But why is that? Here you pay for more premium build, it's made of metal, of course it has larger aperture, the glass is heavier here, and because of cheaper build of this, Canon RF has stronger vignetting. And that, I think, is the major disadvantage of this lens, because when you shoot at 1.8 and you have stronger vignetting than this lens at 1.4, well, you take this for your photo shoot, <laughs> because you can shoot in lower light, you get better photos, but it's heavier, it doesn't have image stabilizer, but okay, doesn't matter in photography. You will be able to see how bad this vignetting is later in this video, when I will show you the backstage from the photo shoots. On the other hand, this one is much, much lighter than that, and if you want to go traveling, you just take this one, snap on your camera, and you don't need anything else. It's lightweight, it doesn't require EF to RF adapter, so it's very low profile. It's almost like a pancake lens. If this was a top 5 about traveling tips, that would be number one lens to take with. <laughs> and, as I already said, for the higher price of this one, you get a lens hood, you get a nice pouch, and better build quality. It feels like real lens, real professional lens, but of course it's much heavier. But despite its higher price, its autofocus sound is 
very loud. For example, this one has STM motor and you virtually don't hear it. This one has loud autofocus. Yes, difference number five is bokeh, quality of autofocus background that these lenses produce. And clear winner in that one is, of course, Sigma. Because, of course, it's hard to beat aperture 1.4. When you are looking to buy a prime lens like this one, of course, the first thing you are looking at is the quality of the image itself, quality of the bokeh. And that means together they make the main point in this review. Image quality of this one is higher, is better and is more pleasing to look at. So, one feature of this and one of the main difference from the Sigma lens is this control ring. Sigma doesn't have one and on that you can assign some of the features you want to use with your camera. For example, you can change the ISO using that or aperture, or shutter speed, or even white balance. 